This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Create, actually, zoop, create a scene that draws random circles and rectangles using random colors at random locations in the theater. Wow, that's a lot of random. Let's see what we're doing. In shape scenes dot Java, okay. Write the create scene method to draw the number of shapes specified by the num shapes parameter. Okay, the number of shapes specified. Let's see, do we see a num shapes parameter? Yes, we do. All right, to do, draw num shapes number of circles and rectangles with random colors at random locations. Woof. All right, generate a random number, zero or one. Draw a circle if the number is zero. Draw a rectangle if the number is one. Interesting. So let's see. Okay, so there's a few things going on here, and wow, this is confusing. This number here, guys, this integer is the amount of shapes we're going to draw. Now, it wants us to randomize whether we draw a circle or a rectangle. The way it's asking us to do that, apparently, is by using the a random number, and we would want it to either be 0 or 1. All right, so I'm going to say int, uh, and if 0 and 1 are both in integers, so I'm just going to say int rand um maybe i'll say random number i'll just spell it all out and what is that going to be equal to well we already know math dot random boom boom all right now this is going to be a double by default so i'm going to cast it to be an int right and that means just demand that it's an integer however we still have an issue because what does math dot random provide it provides a random number between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 oh uh, zero inclusive but not one well that's not going to be helpful right we need it to be either zero or one there's a ton of ways you can make it so that it's either zero or one the way i'm going to settle with is after this random number is created i'm going to add zero point oop, i'm going to add 0 0.5 to it now, the reason this is going to work, or it should, is because I know, once again, guys, this can be 0, it can be 0 0.2, it can be 0 0.7. It's between 0 and 1. Now, I'm going to automatically add 0 0.5 to that. So now I know it is going to be between 0 0.5 and 1.5, or actually 1.49. Why that is great is because int, when you cast something to an int, that is a double, it floors it. And what I mean by that is everything after the decimal is ignored. So that means we will get zeros or ones out of this. If it's 0 0.4, or it can't be that. If it's 0 0.6, it will be a zero. If it's 1.2, it will be a one because it drops all the decimal places to become an energy. Integer, great. So now I have that done. Draw a circle if it's number zero. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take some notes here so I don't forget. If uh random equals equals zero and then i'm gonna say just in a comment circle and then i'll just do an else i could do an else if but we know if it's not a circle it's gonna be a what do they want rectangle rectangle okay choose a random color already so this is looking good. I'm going to take a few more notes, guys. Remember, I'm going to need a for loop around this, right? Because we're going to draw a particular number. So for loop add this here. All right. But right now, let's just be successful with one. So now I have my random number. And again, and again, and again, there's a bunch of ways to do this, right? So this is my method. You could also probably do times two. I've seen students do this. Things of that nature would also produce the same result. It is up to you how you want to do it. As long as it gives you zero or one, both ways are correct. There's going to be more than just those ways. All right. So now I have a random number. Uh, let's see. Random zero one. Oh, and a random color. Okay. Well, let me see. Do we have? Oh, we have colors right here. And oh, it looks like, of course. So in the constructor here, guys, when we first create this object, we are going to have to pass the colors, which are listed here and they're asking us that we draw with a random color well that should be easy enough because we have access to the possibilities of what the color can be the length of this color array is what we would need so i'm going to say int color index because that's what we're going to be getting and then what i'm going to want to do is do int 
And then I'm going to do math.random. And let's see, how many colors are there? One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to do times five because that is the length. And this is a terrible idea. Do not do this. Don't do it. Here's why you don't want to do it. Because if I go in here and add 19 more colors, this is going to completely mess up our random colors. We'd only ever get the first five indexes. So instead of hard coding is what this would be called, a number here, it's just not necessary. I have access to this, right? There's this instance variable up here, colors, which is an array. So I'm not going to hard code it. I'm going to write colors.length. And that way, oh, it doesn't need parentheses. We do dot length on strings, uh, parentheses on strings. That way, whatever the length is times the math.random method will give us our integer. Now, let me magic over and show you why this works. Notice that we can have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way down to 0 0.9, right? That's what a random number we're create. Our length will be 7 always. So 0 0.1 times 7 equals 0 0.7. Now when I cast this into an integer, the integer, again, guys, ignores everything after the decimal. So that is 0. Now 0 0.6 times 7 equals 4.2. Cast as an integer means ignore the decimal, 4. And you can see 0 to 6 will be hit, which is all the indexes of the color array if the color array is 7, but the color array is 5. But the point being, even if it was longer, it would work or shorter. So this is a really powerful way to conduct things. It's also why a 2 would work right here. Okay, now that being said, we'll be able to have our color index picked out. Now what would be left to do is draw the shape. And we are going to use... Oh good, we're importing the theater class. So if we need a refresher, if you maybe don't remember everything that was within our theater class, it is actually right here for reference. And I don't remember everything, so I'm going to reference it, because it's a really good idea to use your resources. So we see play seed, play, play seed, seeds. And then I'm also going to reference seed, which is here. Ah, and so there it is. So guys, I want to point out what I did here. I looked at theater first, and I looked at scene. And the reason is, is I know I'm making use of both of those. And so I went to org.code.theater, the documentation. And now I remember how to draw both an ellipse and a rectangle. So right here. Okay, great. So we're going to be all set there. So if it is zero, what do I need to do? Well, it shows me right here, I would use draw ellipse. And this gives me more detail. What do I need? I need an X, Y width and height. Hmm. And it sounds like all of these are going to be randomized. So I'm actually going to copy this so I don't forget. I just slap it right there. I'm now going to go back up, up, up and look for rectangle. And there we are. I'm going to do the same thing. Control C and Control V. Okay. And now I need to look at how we want to do this. So it doesn't say that I need to randomize the shape, I guess. So I can go ahead and pick that. Or it doesn't say I need to randomize width or height, does it? No. Um, X and Y do need to be randomized. Okay. So if I don't need to randomize width or height, Mm, I'm going to just pick a default. So I'm going to do int width is going to be equal to what 100. It height is going to be equal to 100. Okay, that's looking good. And now I need x and y to be randomized. So that's going to be somewhat up to us. Okay, well then I'm just going to do int x, I guess, is going to be equal to, bam, bam, math.random. Now, I need to know the size of our board. Thankfully, if I go over, let me go look at my documentation, because we're going to need to know the size of the seed board. 
get width returns the width of the canvas in pixels. Cool. So now, in order to be able to do this, I'm going to do this multiplied by, uh, I could do scene. Is this static? My scene dot get width. Ah, except I don't need to do my scene because I'm within the, notice this extend scene, guys, right? So we are building this class on top of the, or as a subclass to scene, which means, ooh, this is complicated. I can use the this keyword. Because this is going to refer to shapes.scene, but also the scene class. And what's within this scene class is this ability to get the width of the canvas. The canvas being the theater or the drawing area. Yikes, this is getting hairy. All right, so I'm going to do get width. There we go. And that will be my X. I'm going to do this something similar for Y. Give me a moment and I'll explain. So same logic here, guys, for Y. I do cast it as an int just to make sure it is in the appropriate format. Cool. And so now I have boop, 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 and uh, width. I actually just called width. Hey, that's handy. Woo. Okay, let me clean this up. This is looking pretty good. I haven't added the loop yet. I do need to, but I want to test this first to see if it works at all. It's really likely there will be de some debugging with the complexity of this lesson. All right, so call scene, yep. So I'm going to go ahead and do my scene dot, and we already instantiated this, right? They passed it the colors. So my scene dot create scene. Just go over here for reference. Create scene is what we did. And number of shapes, I'll say three. Now, if we remember, well, let's see if this throws a bug first. Yep, there we are. And again, guys, this is going to be expected with this amount of code. And this isn't simple either. Ah, of course, it's a typo on my part. So I'm looking at shape scene line 32. Number. Boom. All right, let's, let's still. Oh, there we go. Witchcraft. Okay, so now this at least compiled. So let me go ahead and do now theater as they suggest dot play and oh I can't see my theater oh no we did all that and it's not working no it is guys and you might need to go to documentation play scenes well at least I hope it is we need to actually tell it our scenes name so we got to pass this as the parameter I believe hopefully Okay, so right now I'm getting one shape. And why am I only getting one? I told it three. We still need to add the loop, right? I'm doing it one step at a time, though. It's easier to debug prior to adding a loop than post. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so I'm going to say four. And I'm going to do a traditional loop. So int i is going to be equal to zero. And i is going to be the index. I guess I could even say, mm, mm, mm. nope. Mm. Yeah, I'll do index, I guess is equal to zero index is going to be except it's not index i'm going to do imp shape count is equal to zero so we're going to start with zero shapes i'm going to do shape count is less than num shapes because we want it to get up to the number of shapes without going over and remember we're starting at zero so stopping at the number of shapes will be appropriate and then uh what did i call mine shape count plus plus okay and now i'm going to just take all of this code and go bloop, and let me format this all righty this is all looking pretty good let me give it a shot again okay obviously my color is not working it is not changing colors for me and i can confirm this by doing you know eight yep all the same color so what's going on there? Oh, I didn't actually select the color. So I created a variable for it, guys. And then I never actually requested that it do that. Now, how do we pick a color? Again, you might need to head over to documentation to figure this out. It's been a bit since we've done this. However, I'm aware, let's see, color index. I'll do it right after we do all of this, right? I don't want to do it in the middle of the declaration of ints. But what I will do is do this, because that's the current scene still, and then set fill color and then what color will I use well 
I can reference colors up here. That's my array. Colors. And then I can do this, color index. And that way, whatever number is currently at color index will be the color the shape is drawn as. So let's see. Bam. And if you want to get real creative, you could even randomize the sizes of these, although that's not required. I want to go through real quick all that's happening, guys, because it's a lot. So here's what's occurring. First, we have this array. This array is the colors, right? It's already declared. We then instantiate our object. So the computer says, OK, I need to make a new shape scene object called my scene. How do I do that? I create a new shape scene and I pass it colors. Colors make this. So we head over here and it goes, oh, OK, so shape scene is built on top of this scene class. And what does this involve? Here's the constructor colors. Oh, what was colors? This list. OK, so now I'm going to set the colors variable here equal to whatever was out here. So now we have that saved in the class and our object exists. We then continue onward. My scene, which is this object, which is from this class, create scene eight. And so then it says, what the heck is that? Schmack. OK, create a new scene. Eight. OK, is the number of shapes. So for int, oh, put a space there for readability. For int, shape is going to be shape count. Shape count is zero. Shape count is less than the number of shapes. And we're shape plus plus means go up by one each time. So however many shapes we are going to keep looping through between these curly brackets and rerunning the code until 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 we get to enough shapes. Each time we randomize a number, which will be zero one because of this plus five, we do a random number for the color index, which is however long this is. And then we also are setting width and height. I just set them to 100. You might do 70, whatever you like. We randomize the location, the X and Y location of the shape. And then we set the fill color for our scene. This is a reference to our scene class or our shape scene class, our current instantiation. We're saying set the current fill color. And then I say, all right, if my random number is equal to zero, circle. If it's not, draw a rectangle and go back to the top. And we get this. Ta-da! Pretty complicated, but really cool. Sweet. Onward.